So uh, we're going to uh, show you what happens when you heat various metals in air. Remember, air is a mixture uh, of different substances. It's 20% uh, oxygen, that's the reactive bit, and most of it's nitrogen, which is unreactive. So uh, what happens when you heat these things up? Well, they react with oxygen in the air if you get them hot enough. Um, so I'm going to show you what happens with zinc. I've got zinc powder here. Zinc comes in various different forms. Uh, you might see zinc outside if you look at um, lampposts and things like that. They've got a lovely pattern on them. That's because they're coated in zinc. But this is very finely divided uh, zinc I've got here. Uh, it's, it's, it's like very fine sugar. Uh, and I'm going to heat it. So I'll turn the uh, Bunsen to a nice roaring flame and uh, put a, a spatula of this stuff into the flame and see if I can get it to, to ignite. Uh, so put it in the hot part of the flame. The spatula is, is conducting the heat away, so this doesn't tend to get hot enough. So the trick is if you just tap and you can get it to go into the, uh, into the flame and you can see that. So it's a nice fine gray powder. And then when I whack it into the flame, uh, it ignites with a, a kind of a greeny flame and we get this uh, white smoke being produced, okay? Uh, so uh, it's reacting with oxygen, so that white smoke is zinc oxide that's coming off uh, as I do that. Okay, so a nice green flame and then white smoke, which hopefully won't set the alarms off. Okay, uh, so that's uh, zinc. Uh, and then we've got some sodium here for you. Now sodium is, is a peculiar metal, you don't come across it very often, um, and it's stored in a plastic uh, vessel with lots of hazards on it. So we've got corrosive, we've got flammable, we've got explosive. Uh, so this is why, of course, you don't come across sodium very often. And inside the plastic tub is a uh, glass tub. And the sodium is sitting uh, in chunks at the bottom of this uh, liquid. So this liquid is oil. And the oil is keeping the air and moisture away from the sodium because uh, sodium reacts with these. So I'm going to fish it a wee bit out. Uh, and then dry off, get rid of the oil. Uh, so I'm going to go fishing, see if I can get a bit. Okay, it's very gloopy oil, this. Uh, so I'm going to just clean it up a little bit uh, on some tissue to try and get rid of uh, some of the oil, because I don't really want to show you what happens when you burn oil. I want to show you what happens when I burn uh, sodium. Okay, so dry that off. And uh, I'm going to put the lid back on here so we don't do anything dangerous. Okay, so I'm going to sit this on a little spoon. This is called a, a deflagrating spoon. Okay, uh, and it's for, for heating things up. Uh, uh, so I can sit it on a little, little thing there. Okay, and I'm going to roast it. Okay, so nice roaring flame and seeing if I can get this. Uh, so the first thing that happens is that the oil burns off. So you sometimes have a little uh, uh, bit of a flame from that. And then I don't know if you can see that, but the, the sodium is actually melting. Okay. And it's producing uh, a very bright orange color. And now it's started to burn. So it's just burning away nicely there. Okay. A little ball of molten sodium. Okay. Uh, so it's self-supporting, burning away. I'm going to do something a bit of fun here. I'm going to stick it into pure oxygen and see if that uh, makes things go a bit better. Uh, sometimes it does. So see what happens here. Whoa. Okay, so that's the difference when it was burning quite happily in air. And then I put it in oxygen. So that gas jar there contained neat oxygen. Uh, and so we've, uh, we get a much more vigorous reaction. So if you think about what the composition of air is, and you think about what the composition of the gas in that jar, i.e. oxygen is, you might be able to think about why it's a much more vigorous reaction in oxygen than it was uh, in just the air. Okay, so that was a bit of fun. And then uh, if you look at the uh, experiment sheet that you've got, then we've got uh, various other things that we would like to uh, heat up in, in air. So we've done zinc, we've done sodium, we're going to do copper next. So I've got some uh, bits of copper here. We all know what copper it looks like. Copper coloured, isn't it? So orange coloured uh, metal. Okay. Uh, it's very shiny. Uh, orangey, 
uh, brown color. Uh, so this time I'm going to just uh, clamp some of it in a set of tongs uh, and roast it and see what happens. So keep a close eye on it. Okay, just put it in for a couple of seconds and it's already gone black on the surface. Okay, so that was a very quick uh, reaction there on the surface of it. And if I hold it in for longer, I'm going to make it glow red. So I'm going to get it as hot as I possibly can. So it's glowing red. And you can hear this, the power of the flame there on that. But it's not igniting. And if I take it up out, it, it stops glowing red as it cools down. And all we have is a black sheen on the surface of it. Okay, so it doesn't matter how high, hard I heat this, okay, in a Bunsen flame. I can't get it to melt like sodium did, and I can't get it to ignite like sodium did. Okay, but it did go uh, from a nice a shiny orange color uh, to uh, uh, black on the surface. Okay, uh, so that's a bit of copper. Uh, now we're going to do, um, okay, we're going to do magnesium next. Uh, so I've got some magnesium strips here. Uh, I'll take one of those and I'll uh, put it in flame. So what does it look like? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's quite shiny. Uh, it's fairly stiff, uh, thin ribbon of the stuff. Um, so hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to pop this in here and um, uh, see if I can get it to light. So it lights really, really quite easily and burns with an incredibly bright flame. Okay, so if this was in the lab, I'd be telling you not to look at that flame directly because uh, it releases a lot of uh, ultraviolet light, which would be bad for your eyes. Um, and it gives you this white ash instead. And if I give that a little tap, it'll fall to pieces. Uh, but that white ash is the product. And there's a little bit where I was holding it with the tongs, which hasn't quite reacted yet um, because it couldn't get any air. So if I could just pick that back up and see if I can get that back in there. Let's see if we can get that last little bit to light. Okay, and it didn't burn because I was holding the tongs on it. Okay, it wasn't getting any air, and it therefore wasn't getting oxygen, so it couldn't react. Okay, uh, so we've done that, we've done that. Um, let's look at this. This is iron. Okay, it doesn't look like iron. This is uh, iron wool. Okay, it's the sort of thing you might get on uh, scouring pads and stuff like that. Again, very finely uh, drawn out fibers of iron. It's not like an iron nail or something like that. Um, and the reason I'm using that, this one is um, if you try and heat an iron nail, it doesn't do very much. Uh, but as you can see from this gray hair-like substance, when I put it in the flame, uh, watch this. Okay, so it's glowing. It's not quite burning. Uh, and it's uh, forming these little uh, globules of uh, hot metal which are flying off. Okay. And if I pop it out and have a little, little look at it, uh, it's gone much darker in colour okay, than it was. Okay, it was, was grey, I'd say it's gone, gone, in places it's gone black now. Um, and um, heat up, it's not all disappearing, but uh, we're getting, getting through it there. Um, Okay, that's probably the best bit of the reaction done now. So it glows orange when it's in the flame. Uh, little bits of it flake off uh, and we end up with a much darker material than we started off with, but it's still got that same structure. Okay, I'm going to go back to one more uh, of these that we've done before. I'm going to go back to copper. I've got some big bits of copper here. And the reason for the big bits of copper is that I'm going to see if we can see what happens when you fold them over uh, and keep one bit of the copper away from the air. So I'm going to make a little uh, um, uh, parcel here where some of the copper is, is not exposed to the air when it's heated. So I'm going to fold it a few times uh, and see if I can um, keep the air out of the bit in the middle. Okay, so just, I hope I don't cut myself on this. Okay, so I've made a little, little package and I'm going to heat this really strongly. Uh, and we know what's going to happen on the outside of it. 
Okay. Uh, it's starting to discolor already, so it's just, oh, there we go again. It's just starting to turn black on the outside as I heat it up. Okay, so I've done what I wanted to on the outside. I've turned it black. Okay. But what about on the inside where there was no air could get to it? Uh, is that going to stop the reaction? So uh, I'm going to cool it down a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, open it up and see if I can uh, look inside this little parcel and see what, see what it looks like in there. How hot is it? Oh, it's still quite hot. Okay, so open it up. Okay, so as I unfold it, you start to see the copper color again. Uh, and the reason that that's still the, the normal color of copper is, of course, that it hasn't had any um, air nearby when it was getting hot. Okay, so, oops. Trying to peel it back. I think that's as far open as I can get it. Okay, so it's still orangey coloured inside, where it's black on the outside where the air was. Okay, we're done.